Welcome to ICA's Christmas celebration, The Promise. We are about to begin, but before we do, here are a few quick announcements. This year, our Christmas Eve service will be online only for families to enjoy together at home. It will happen online on December 24th at 7 p.m. Stay tuned in the coming weeks for more information. The following day will be Christmas Sunday. We will have Christmas services at ICA at our normal times of 8 a.m. for Bahasa and 10 a.m. for English. Be sure to follow us on social media to keep up to date with what is happening at ICA. And now, here is a Christmas greeting from Pastor John Taylor. Hello, ICA. This is Pastor John. I just want to welcome you today as we celebrate Christmas with our production called The Promise. Uh, I hope you enjoy as we tell the story of God's promise to us, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Joyful, joyful Lord, we adore Thee, God of glory. Born on 
beginning was the Word. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through Him all things were made, and nothing that is made was made apart from Him. In Him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. But darkness entered the world. Through deception it corrupted God's good creation, deceived and led astray those made in God's image. The darkness fought against the light, hoping to extinguish its brightness from the hearts of all mankind. God saw what the darkness had done, and His word became a promise. A promise that one day a child of Adam and Eve would defeat the darkness. One who would right all wrongs. One who would restore creation and make it new and whole again. Through the ages, the promise was kept in the hearts of mankind. In every generation, the darkness fought against the light, yet the promise lived on, carrying with it the hope of humanity. Then one day, the time came for the promise to arrive. The light entered the darkness. The Word, through whom all things were made, became one of us, so we could become children of God. This is how it happened.
Let's read a passage of scripture for today. It says, I see him, but not now. I behold him, but not near. A star will rise out of Jacob. A scepter will rise out of Israel. What does it mean, Father? It is a prophecy about the Messiah, the one who will sit on the throne of King David. Who is he and what will he do? He is the great king. When he comes, he will free us from all of our oppressors. He will sit on the throne of David and govern all the nation in peace. Is he coming soon? Hopefully soon. We wait and cry out for him. Just as Israel cried out in the time of Moses for God to deliver them. But how will we know him? You must be watching and ready for the day he comes. If your heart is ready, you will know him. The world itself will not be the same. Simeon, I haven't seen you today. What is that look on your face? It looks like you have seen something wonderful. I had a dream last night, Anna. In my dream, a voice spoke to me saying that I would not pass from this world until I had seen the salvation of God which he has prepared in the sight of all nations, a light to the Gentiles, and the glory of Israel. But what can it mean? It is the word of the Lord to you. Long have you prayed for the coming of the promised one, and the Lord has heard your prayers. You will see God's Messiah. Can it be? Indeed, the Lord's promise will truly come to those who watch and wait for him. We are 
uplifted high in praise and it's you we adore singing When the time of the promise arrived, it did not happen in the way people expected. It was not to a palace that the angel Gabriel was sent, but rather to a small village called Nazareth, to a poor family, and to a young girl named Mary, who was engaged to be married to a simple carpenter named Joseph. Greetings, Mary. You are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Who are you? I am Gabriel, who stands in the presence of the Most High God. I have been sent to you now. Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and his kingdom will never end. How will this be? As I am still unmarried. The Holy Spirit will rest on you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the one to be born will be called the Son of God, for no word from God will ever fail. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. Who has been gracious to me? His mercy extends from generation to generation. He has brought down the rulers from their thrones, but has lifted up the humble. And from this day on, all generations will call me blessed. May your word to me happen, just as you have said. Later, a decree went out from the emperor Caesar Augustus that a census should be taken of the whole land. Joseph and Mary traveled to Bethlehem, the town of Joseph's birth, to be counted. While there, the time came for the child to be born. Since there was no room anywhere for them to stay, they took refuge in a stable and prepared for the baby to come.
in far-off lands to the east, there were wise men who watched the signs and the seasons, and they knew that the time of the promise was near. They looked to the sky and saw a star shining in the west and knew it was a sign that a great king was coming into the world. Look, a star shines in the west over the land of Israel. It's a sign that a great king will be born. Remember the writings? Long ago, during the time of King Darius, there lived in this very land a great magi named Daniel. He foretold the coming of a divine king. He said from the time of the decree to rebuild the city of Jerusalem until the arrival of the promised king would be 483 years. Those days are near fulfilled. What are we waiting for then? We must prepare to set out. We must bring gifts and welcome this divine king into the world. Nearby, outside Bethlehem, shepherds were watching over their flock in the surrounding fields. Hey, no sleeping over there. Keep an eye out. We don't want a lion or other animal to come get the sheep. Who can sleep with that bright star shining over there? It lights up everything. I'm pretty sure you could sleep through both the star and the lion. Not all lions are bad. What do you mean? If you ever met a lion, I'm sure you will run. Remember what our forefather Jacob said when he blessed his sons? He said, For you are a lion's cub, O Judah, and the ruler's scepter will not depart from Judah until he comes to whom it belongs, and the obedience of the nations shall be his. So the Messiah, the true king who is coming, he is the lion of Judah, so that indeed is the lion I am waiting to see. See, you are telling me to stay awake, and this one is already dreaming. Haha, <laughs> he is right. The Lion of Judah is the one lion we are all hoping to see. of many waters, Son of heaven strong, louder than the thunder, make your glory known. In the land of Judah, let the lion roar. In the land of Judah, let the lion Oh, hear the lion of Judah, let the lion roar. Hear the lion of Judah, let the lion Zion, prophet 
gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger. The hope of the nations had come, not in a palace and in splendor, but in humility, not in power and glory, but in gentleness. The Lion of Judah entered the world like a lamb to take away our sins. The word that spoke creation into existence was now one with his creation. The promise had come for the poor and the great. The promise had come for the righteous and the sinful. The promise had come for those near and those far away. And the promise has come for you and for me. 
He invites everyone to come to him freely without shame or fear. And to all who receive him, he gives the power to become children of God. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Yeah.
in the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through Him all things were made. Without Him nothing was made that has been made. In Him was life, and that life was the light of mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. That is the Word of God from John chapter 1, verses 1 to 5. Well, I hope that you have been enjoying our Christmas celebration so far. This is just a terrific time of the year where we come together and uh, worship our Saviour, Jesus, who was born into the world. My name is Leighton, and uh, I would just love to share this short message with you titled, The Promised Saviour. We've just read in John chapter 1 about the light shining in the darkness. And there is something about the human heart that is attracted to light and yet fearful of darkness. You might remember when you were a child, that feeling of being afraid of the dark and you would ask your parents perhaps for a nightlight or even to keep the door ajar enough so that the light would come in. And this need for light and appreciation and attraction towards light, we see it even as adults. You might have sat on a mountaintop and looked down at the city lights before and they are splendid and beautiful and they uh, convey a sense of uh, stability, of, of progress, of safety. You see, deep down, all of us long for the light. All of us need light. And somehow we know that it is more than just daylight. It is more than just the natural external light that we need. There is a light within that our hearts long after. We long for a light that will pierce through the clouded fog of our hearts and, and usher in the breaking of a dawn. We long for a light that will vanquish the shadow of our souls. We long for a light that will triumphantly blast away the blackness of our souls and replace it instead with an incandescent splendor, a purity and a love that glows and that is in, that is in abundant supply. And our hearts long for this light and yet we don't quite know how to describe it because we are incapable of knowing it on our own. But here at Christmas, we celebrate that the true light has come. As we celebrate the birth of our Saviour, Jesus, we celebrate Him as the true light, as the light of the world, as the morning star, as the internal flame who was there from the beginning. You see, Jesus is the light whom the prophets foretold of many hundreds of years before He was born. We read in the book of Isaiah, chapter 7, verse 14, Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel. Today, we celebrate Emmanuel, which means God with us. He is the one who would be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, as we've just sung. And from the very beginning of history, even as we go back to the book of Genesis, we see that the arrival of Jesus, his entrance into the world as a baby was planned, was expected and was foretold. It was even prophetically declared in Genesis chapter three that the offspring of Eve would one day come into the world and would crush the head of the serpent. You see, the light of the world was always going to break into the darkness. Nothing surprised God about the way that Jesus came into the world. This was not plan B or C or D. Jesus was always God's plan A. And you and I here receiving his word is his plan A as well. And so as we pick up the story in John chapter 1, we read in verse 14, the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son who came from the Father, full of grace 
and truth. I love this idea that the promised light is full of grace and truth. You see, this is the astounding gift of Christmas. Sometimes we make it about the presents and sometimes we make it about the family gatherings and and the lights and the trees and and all of that. And that is all nice. And and to be honest, I, I love that. But at Christmas, we recognize that the one who not only bore the truth, but the one who is the truth himself, the truth incarnate, the word made flesh is also gracious to us. He is loving to us. He is kind and compassionate. And this Christmas, no matter what your background is, no matter whether you come from a church background or this is your first time in a church, I hope that you can discover that Jesus loves you, that he wants to extend his kindness to you. It says in verse 14 that he made his dwelling among us. You see, the light entered into a world of gloom and darkness. The light shines in the darkness. And for many of us, you know, Christmas remains this this vague idea that is shrouded in darkness. Some of us try to light it up with artificial lights and and Christmas vibes and, and trees and presents. And we can fixate on these things sometimes without pondering the meaning that is within And, you know, there are others who just get so uh, tired and and sick of the consumerist hype of Christmas and we dismiss it as just another religious holiday in the calendar and we just want to move on. But regardless of what Christmas is to you, regardless of whether you call yourself a Christian or whether you were dragged here by a nagging uncle or auntie, the world without a true source of light is a world cloaked in darkness. You see, the truth is that without Jesus, our world can only see in shades of gray. There is a grayness to our decision making. There is a grayness to our moral choices. There is a grayness to our lifestyle choices. You know, without the light of the world, we lose all sense of what is good and bad. We lose all sense of what is right and wrong. Our our very moral compass is dimmed by our own inability to fix our eyes on the light. And you see, without the light, we can find ourselves enough light to to fumble our way around for a time. And yet without the light of the world, it is dark enough that we find ourselves incapable of knowing true and lasting joy. The joy that can only come through having a personal relationship with Jesus the light of the world. Surabayans, you know, we can have it all. We can have the cars and the house and the family and and the lifestyle of our choice. We can live comfortable lives and yet still find ourselves in the darkness. We need the true light, a light that brings color back into our world and helps us see the world and helps us see those around us in the way that God intends for us to see. As we return to John chapter one in verse nine, it says the true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. This Christmas, don't let your lives be lit up by artificial light. You know, our lives are are so often lit up artificially. If you have ever ever spent a, a day in an office before under artificial lights, you would understand that after a while, our our eyes grow tired and we begin to lose focus. And that is where we are at in our society. We are, our vision is lit up by the blinding lights of, of consumerism, of overwork, of addiction to holidays, of our search for the latest incredible experience. But we cannot let our eyes be lit up only by artificial light. We need the focus and the clarity of having our eyes fixed on the true light, the light that has already come. You know, John, he uh, likes to talk about the light quite a bit. And he says again in chapter three, verse 19, this is the verdict. Light has come into the world. The promised savior is the light in the darkness. He is the light who has both come 
and fulfilled the promise and yet is also coming to fulfill it again. The light who has come brightening our path with a knowledge of the goodness of God and yet the light who will return, bringing with him the heavenly glow of his glory upon the earth as he establishes his everlasting kingdom. And so as we pick up the Christmas story, the nativity scene of baby Jesus, we read in Luke chapter 2, verse 10 to 12. But the angel said to them, the shepherds, do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord this will be a sign to you. You'll find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Now we can read this and ask the question, how did Jesus come into the world as a baby? How can the king of the world, the light of the world, the promised savior be born in what we would call a gudang? Apalagi a gudang di desa. You know, Jesus could have entered into the world as a warrior king and, and taken the world's kingdoms by storm. Jesus could have entered the world into a wealthy family and laid claim to all the riches of the world. He was entitled to all of that. But he came instead, not with pomp and ceremony, but in a state of meekness and of vulnerability. As a baby, it was the most humble of beginnings, crying, covered in baby gunk in a manger. This was the very picture of God stooping down to meet us at our own level. It is this beautiful picture of God wading into the murky waters of our humanity, into a sea of gray, fully identifying with our brokenness and with our poverty so that he could then see as we see, so that he could feel as we feel, so that he could cry as we cry, so that even in our brokenness, we could experience the true promise of God with us, Emmanuel. And that is what we celebrate today. Jesus himself in the book of John chapter eight, verse 12 said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. You see, the joy of Christmas is that we can behold the light, the promised savior, to see the beauty of Jesus and to let it light up our lives in a true and everlasting way, to have the light of life. Peter, Jesus' friend, says it similarly. In 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9, he says, we are called out of the darkness and into his glorious light. Can I tell you that your calling this Christmas is out of darkness and into light. The trajectory, the purpose, the calling that God has for your life is a good one. And as we return to John chapter 1, looking now at verse 12, it says, Yet to all, yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. I love that he says yet to all. It is not just to some. It is not just to, to those of you who may have it all worked out or those of you who have money or those of you who have influence or who are good looking or who grew up in church. No, it says to all. Jesus came for all peoples. You see, babies are not born with social status. He came without status into the world. And so for all people, whether your background is Javanese or, or Chinese or Madarese or Australian like myself, Jesus came to those who are near and he came to those who are far. And to all who received him, he gave the undeserved right to become children of God. What an incredible promise that God would pull our lives into the wonderful story of his promised son so that his promises 
might become ours. Promises that he will give us a hope and a future. Promises that he will fill our lives with his light, that we might bask in the light of the sun. And this Christmas, all of us here listening today have the opportunity to know Jesus as the light of our lives, to receive him, to have a relationship with him, because just as he is God with us, he is the God who lives. We have the opportunity to have the light of the world burst forth in our lives, kindling an eternal flame in our hearts. The Bible says in Romans chapter 10, verse 9, that when we believe in our hearts and confess with our tongues that Jesus Christ is Lord, we will be saved. And this Christmas, I want all of us listening to have this opportunity to accept Jesus into our hearts. And so I'm going to ask if you can uh, focus your heart, focus your, your mind, your attention with me this moment as we pray together. If you would like to ask Jesus into your heart for the first time or to make a recommitment with him this Christmas season to follow him as the light of your hearts, would you pray with me and perhaps close your eyes? Dear Lord Jesus, I thank you that you are the light of the world. And I pray that you would be the light of my life. I believe in you. And I'm sorry for living a life without you. I welcome you into my heart. I pray that you fill it with your life and your light. And that you help me to be a light to others as I follow you. In Jesus' name, amen.
Well, if you were listening today and you prayed that prayer earnestly, uh, whether for the first time or making a recommitment, I just want to celebrate that decision with you and encourage you. Thank you. And uh, I, I rejoice in that. And as ICA, as a church, we would love to be helping you with your next steps. And so I just encourage you to reach out to uh, www.icasby.com and uh, we'd love to help you with that, your next steps and uh, what that might mean and uh, help with any questions you might have too. But just in closing this message, as we continue on with our Christmas celebrations, you know, Jesus has said that we are the light. And one of the great things about this particular time of year uh, apart from all the, the celebrations and, and family times and all of that, is that it is a time where people are, are generally more open to, to hearing the news of Jesus. And to them, it is good news. They are attracted to the light. And I believe that nothing would give God greater pleasure than to see the people of ICA taking this message of Jesus and sharing his light with others. In Matthew chapter 5, Verse 14 to 16, Jesus himself says to the church, you are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a stand and it gives light to all the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. ICA, it is time to let your light shine. I believe that the light of Jesus doesn't find its truest expression until we begin to cast it out unto others. It is a light that we don't hold on to for ourselves, but we put it on a stand for others to see. And so as we sing this final song together, go tell it on the mountains. I want you to agree in your heart that this Christmas you will arise and shine, that you will let your light shine. ICA, let there be light. God bless. Oh